Hey everybody, Chris here from ProjectOption.com and in today's video we're going to talk about quantifying option prices. So when we talk about implied volatility or volatility in this case, we're talking about option prices. So in this video we're going to talk about VXST, VIX, VXV, and VXMT which are the Chicago Board Option Exchange's volatility indices that quantify the option prices on the S&P 500 index. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so what are VXST, VIX, VXV, and VXMT? Well, there are four primary Chicago Board Option Exchange volatility index products related to S&P 500 index options. Now, the S&P 500 index has the ticker SPX. Now, each of the following indices quantifies the option prices or implied volatility of SPX options with varying lengths of time until expiration. So the first one is VXST, which is the SIBO's short-term volatility index that quantifies SPX option prices with about nine days to expiration. Now the one you're probably the most familiar with is the VIX, which is the volatility index that, ap that quantifies SPX option prices with approximately 30 days to expiration. Now some of the lesser known ones are the SIBO's three-month volatility index and the midterm volatility index which are VXV and VXMT. Now VXV quantifies three-month volatility or three-month option, three option prices and that means SPX options with around 93 days to expiration are used in the calculation. And finally, VXMT quantifies SPX option prices with approximately six to nine months to expiration. So most of the time people are just watching the VIX, which is the one month option prices on the S&P 500 index. But we can also look at short term and longer term option prices by looking at VXST, VXV, and VXMT. So let's go ahead and look at the normal relationship between all of these four volatility indices. Alright, so during calm market periods, which is most of the time, um, implied volatility as quantified by the VIX is generally very low. Now, when markets are calm, we usually see lower implied volatility in near-term options and higher implied volatility in longer-term options. Now, this can be quantified by looking at VXST and the other three volatility indices provided by the CBOE. So in this case, we're looking at the, the four volatility indices on March 17th, 2017. And as we can see here, VXST is trading at 9.87, VIX is at 11.28, VXV is at 13.92 and VXMT is at 15.85. So what this is telling us is that the near-term option prices on the S&P 500 are trading cheap relative to the longer-term option prices. So the nine-day option prices are trading at a 9.87% implied volatility, while the six to nine-month option prices on the S&P 500 are trading at implied volatilities of about 15.85%. Now, this is normal in calm market periods because when the markets are not moving very much and they're not very volatile, implied volatility is low, and that basically is telling us that there's more certainty in the near term. So when, when markets are calm, we usually see lower implied volatility in near term options and higher implied volatility in longer term options, and that's because there's more certainty in the near term, but over longer periods of time, there is more uncertainty. So people are willing to pay higher prices for insurance over longer periods of time. So during calm market periods, which is most of the time, it's very common to see near-term option prices trading with lower levels of implied volatility than longer-term option prices. And the easiest explanation for that is that there is more certainty in the near-term and less, un less certainty in the long-term when the markets are calm. So what happens when you know, the market starts getting more volatile and implied volatility rises. Well, let's take a look. So to see what happens to near-term and long-term option prices or implied volatility when markets become more fearful, let's look at these four volatility indices through the market sell-off in August of 2015. So as you know, in late August of 2015, the market took a substantial dive and as we can see here, implied volatility across all time frames increased substantially. However, the nearest term implied volatility or option prices, as quantified by VXST, rose from about 12.5% to 55% through that market sell-off. Now on the other hand, if we look at the six to nine month option prices or implied volatility, as quantified by VXMT, 
we can see that before the sell-off, those option prices were trading with an implied volatility around 17.5%, but through that market sell-off, those option prices rose to an implied volatility of about 27.5%. So through that same market sell-off, we can see that the near-term option prices on the S&P 500 experienced the largest relative increase relative to the longer-term option prices as quantified by VXMT. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a snapshot of these four volatility indices on August 24th, 2015, and discuss the implications of each volatility index. All right, so in this example, we're looking at VXST and the other three volatility indices on August 24th, 2015, a day when the market fell significantly. Now as we can see here, this picture looks quite different from the first chart we looked at, which was the four volatility indices during a calm market period. In that chart, we observed VXST trading at lower levels than VIX, VXV, and VXMT. Now that means that near-term option prices were trading at cheaper implied volatilities than the longer-term option prices because there is more certainty in the near-term and more uncertainty over longer periods of time. Now when markets get extremely volatile and start falling significantly, there is a lot more uncertainty in the near-term and actually more certainty over the long-term. Now that's because when markets become extremely volatile, the volatility typically is short-lived and eventually all the fears in the market subside and volatility reverts to a more normal level. Now this can be expressed by, you know, we can see that near-term option prices are trading at significantly higher implied volatilities than the longer-term option prices on August 24th. Now that's because since the uncertainty is primarily near-term, People use near-term options to hedge their positions and therefore the near-term option prices experience the greatest increase in their prices relative to the longer-term options. Now if you just looked at the VIX, you wouldn't be able to understand this complete relationship because to get a complete picture of the market's sentiment, you should look at near-term and longer-term option prices and compare the relationship between them. So during calm market periods, Near-term option prices typically trade with lower levels of implied volatility than longer-term option prices. And during volatile market periods and fearful market periods, the opposite is true in that near-term options typically trade with implied volatilities higher than longer-term option prices. So by looking at these four volatility indices, we can get a better temperature of the overall market sentiment. Alright, so let's just quickly recap the summary of main concepts from this video. So first and foremost, option prices can help us take the temperature of the market and to quantify the prices of options on the S&P 500, we can keep an eye on VXST, VIX, VXV, and VXMT. Now this will give us a much better picture of the volatility landscape than simply just looking at the VIX. Now during calm market periods, which means small daily market movements, Short-term options, as quantified by VXST, typically trade at a lower implied volatility than longer-term options, as quantified by VXMT. This relationship indicates more certainty in the near-term and less certainty over the long-term. Now, During volatile market periods, or large daily market movements, short-term options, as quantified by VXST, typically trade at higher levels of implied volatility than longer-term options, as quantified by VXMT, and this, re this relationship indicates more fear and less certainty in the near term and an expectation that market volatility and fear will subside to a more normal level over the long term. So do you actually have to look at all four of these volatility indices? Not necessarily, but by looking at more than one of them, you can get a better picture of the overall market sentiment via the prices of longer term versus shorter term options. Thank you for watching this video everybody. Please go ahead and take a moment to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the circle on the left hand side. And if you want to check out some more videos, click the video link on the right hand side. And finally, head over to projectoption.com and sign up for a free account with us to gain unlimited access to all of our options trading guides.